Uh, thank you, and good morning. Uh, as Jonathan said, we, uh, we talked about uh, Zool as a new top-level project under the OpenStack Foundation yesterday at the OpenStack Summit keynotes. Uh, uh, you might have seen that if you were there. If you weren't, um, that's okay, because you're all called up now. Uh, <laughs> But uh, despite the fact that it's a new project under the OpenStack Foundation umbrella, it's not a new project overall. Um, so the timing of this is interesting. Why are we hearing about it now? Uh, the answer is that we released a new version called Zool v3. And when we were developing v3, we, uh, we had a focus on making sure that uh, Zool was usable by users outside of the OpenStack project. And that's because Zool enables a method of collaboration within and across projects, which we think is pretty revolutionary, and, uh, and we wanted to share it with people. So what's so revolutionary about Zool? Zool is focused on the future. Uh, we've come a long way with CI systems over the years. The earliest systems are uh, what I would call post-merge systems, where uh, when a developer writes a change and pushes it up to, uh, to a repository, the CI system runs on that change, um, and, uh, or maybe it runs periodically, every hour, uh, that sort of thing, um, maybe every minute. Uh, and, uh, but the thing is, is that a post-merge system can only tell you that something has gone wrong. Um, it, it tells you that, that you've you've screwed up and you have to spend the rest of your day trying to figure out what went wrong and fix it. Um, fortunately, uh, attitudes have started to change with the rise of code review systems. If, say, you go to GitHub now and open up a pull request on, on a project, it's very likely that some CI system is going to run tests on your change. And it's going to say that uh, this change is red or green. It's okay to merge or not okay to merge. And that's great, uh, that's a big improvement. Um, I, I think that that's focused on the present, uh, though. It's, it's just one change at a time. What, is, you know, what, what, are you, what are you going to do with this single change? Uh, with Zool and its process of gating, um, we, it's, it's focused on the future. And the way it does that is it looks at a proposed change, and it looks at all of the dependencies of that change, and it looks at all of the changes that are scheduled to be merged ahead of that change, and it says with certainty that when all of those changes land, the build is still going to be green. So uh, Zool is, again, focused on the future, and it lets developers do the same. So how did we get from pre-merge checks to gating? And this is this is because of the way Zool was developed for the OpenStack project. In OpenStack, projects are highly dependent on each other. Um, we wanted to make sure that a change to one project didn't uh, break the other projects in, in OpenStack. So we developed Zool so that before merging a change, it, uh, it pulls all of the projects together and, uh, and, and tests those uh, at once. So um, Zool, when, it's, when it pulls those changes together, when it pulls those projects together for a change, uh, it, it also pulls in all of the changes that it knows are going to be uh, merged in all of the other projects too. So in other words, Zool knows the future state of every repository in its system, and that's what it ends up testing. Uh, the key to all of this is the idea of dependencies. With dependencies as a first class concept, um, that's a world of possibilities opens up. Not only can we avoid projects breaking each other, which was our original goal in developing Zool for OpenStack, but we enable developers to make structural changes across communities and uh, so that they can demonstrate that those changes are going to work together uh, before, uh, before changes land. Um, this, I think, is the revolutionary thing about Zool. It's when you stop seeing your CI system as something that nags at you for having programmed wrong, and you start to see it as something that enables collaboration. Uh, and this is true even if, your, uh, even if your project is not set up like OpenStack. Even if your project is a monorepo, that still probably has dependencies 
uh, on something, on external dependencies. Uh, or if you're in a corporate environment where you have individual teams responsible for microservices, the same thing applies. So I wanna walk through uh, a quick example uh, of how, uh, how dependencies work and how you can create these uh, series of changes that cross communities. Um, so for this example, I'm gonna talk about writing a change to, uh, to sender that you want to expose all the way through to an end user in Kubernetes. Um, so you'd start by, by writing a change to sender. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna add a new, um, a new option to sender to securely delete a volume when it's done. Um, so uh, first you'd, you'd write your change to sender. This is not uh, a real change, so don't go looking for this one. Um, I, I only have about three minutes left, so, uh, so I've had to simplify this a bit. But uh, so you start by writing your change to sender and, and you push it up to OpenStack's Garrett server. Um, and then in order to be able to use that in Kubernetes, you need to write a change to uh, Gopher Cloud. That's the Go language, API, uh, Go language library for interacting with the OpenStack API. So you'd, uh, you, you'd write this change to Gopher Cloud that uses the new micro version that you presumably added to Sender. Um, and once that's, uh, once that's out there, then finally you can write a change to Kubernetes uh, to expose this option to end users. So with all of that done, you've got three changes out in the wild. Uh, but these are just three independent changes out there. Maybe you know they work together. Uh, maybe you can promise all the developers that everything's gonna work out when they, when they land. Maybe you can try to convince them to download all of these changes and, uh, and run them, uh, and, and they'll see this working. But otherwise, you're just gonna have to wait for the change in Sender to land and for Sender to make a release uh, in, in order uh, to see all of this uh, in action. Uh, unless you use Zool's dependency feature. Uh, so to do that, you'd go back to uh, your Kubernetes change and you'd add a, a single line to the, the, uh, the pull request description uh, up there it, it, where it says depends on and then it has a URL to, uh, to a GitHub pull request. That, that says that this change to Kubernetes depends on this other change to Gopher Cloud. And obviously this is a human readable thing if you read that you'd probably be able to figure out what it means. Um, and if Zool sees that, it, it understands the same thing. It knows that whenever it does anything with this Kubernetes change, it needs to also include the change to Gopher Cloud. So then you go to the change to Gopher Cloud and you do the same thing. You add a depends on here that says this depends on the change to sender. And you'll notice this time, it's not depending on a GitHub URL, it's depending on a Garrett uh, URL, OpenStack's Garrett. And that's fine, Zool understands both, and it'll, it'll pull those changes in from both of those systems. Uh, at this point, if you were to inspect Zool's memory, this is what you would find, three changes that are, that are linked together. Um, so Zool understands that dependency between them, and whenever it does uh, any work with those changes, it, it, uh, it integrates them all together. Um, but let's say that's not enough, let's say, because you haven't, uh, because this is a new feature, the Cinder developers perhaps want to see a, a brand new integration test that's, uh, that, that's actually exercising this end to end. Um, we can do that pretty easily. We can, uh, we can add a new job to Zool's system. And so this is what uh, Zool's configuration language looks like. It's YAML. Um, it's again, hopefully human readable as well as machine readable. Uh, and, and here we're just defining a new job, which we'll call sender Kubernetes secure delete. Um, and, uh, and then we're gonna say, run this job on changes to the sender project. So, uh, so we, we make that change. Uh, to a file in the sender repository, and we push it up to, to OpenStax Garrett again. Um, and, uh, and we have, we add a, a one more depends on line to this change. We say that this depends on the Kubernetes change. So now, if you look at what Zool is doing, uh, we've pushed up our, our new change to add the job at the bottom. Uh, that's, um, and, and you can see that it's a change to sender and it's running a job called sender Kubernetes secure delete. And, uh, and that change depends on our change to Kubernetes, which depends on our change to Gopher Cloud, which depends on our change to sender. And what we're doing here is we've, we've told Zool to, uh, to, to create a new job and to run it. 
and as part of that job, pull in unmerged code from three other repositories. And none of these changes have merged yet, not even the change to add the new job to the system. So in this way, um, uh, developers can, can, this is what I mean when I say we can test changes from end to end. Uh, uh, one end is, the, is, is our, uh, the beginning of the process where we add the original change to sender. The other end is all the way to integration testing. Um, so, uh, so we've seen we've seen this entire process work before we've landed a single change. Um, if you'd like to see more about Zool, uh, Monty Taylor is giving a talk later today on Zool v, called Zool v3 for gating, uh, and uh, Paul and Mohammed are doing a workshop uh, where they will help you install Zool and configure your first jobs. And at both of these talks, um, there will be Zool stickers. <laughs> Thank you.